It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a, what do we call this, Tuckheads Tuesday? We don't do very many Tuesday episodes, but for various travel restriction reasons, we're doing a Tuesday. And we got Andrew Brandt, who hasn't been on the show in weeks. He's been killing it with his column at MMQB and Sports Illustrated. Done an unbelievable job with his Sunday 7 on Sundays. And, of course, the Business of Sports podcast. We will get to Andrew momentarily. We are, of course, presented by DraftKings. Love those dudes. Love all of you that spread the word via social media. It's really easy. Maybe I should tell you which one I want this week. Let's do... Facebook shares. That's a way now because I don't post on Facebook that much. Let's do let's do Twitter retweets or quote tweets at Ross Tucker NFL or at Ross Tucker Pod if you want to be the winner. Sponsor confirmation email winner. You can take advantage of any of the sponsors or just rate and review the show. We got Babel as a sponsor today, which is pretty cool. And then the YouTube shout out. Love all of the love we've gotten for yesterday's episode with Brian and I breaking down our 4th of July vacation. People really enjoyed that, which is cool. I like the change up when people enjoy stuff like that. YouTube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. We've gotten some good comments, but I haven't picked one for the winner yet uh, this week. So make sure you get in on that. We're getting in on Andrew Brandt and the big show. There's a lot to discuss. The big show. Already kind of introduced him other than to say you need to follow him on social media at Andrew Brandt. And the last couple episodes, business and sports, the last couple weeks, Andrew, have been really interesting with the different panels that you've had. Yeah, Ross, always good to be back with you. Uh, As everyone sort of goes away in this reflective time of year, I thought it was time to release a couple symposium topics as people think, I think I have this day job in Villanova. I host a symposium every year on key topics in sports. Got really strong reviews from the live audience. So we released on the podcast two of the panels from the symposium. One was really a sit down with former NFL general manager, Scott Pioli. And I'll tell you, if you haven't listened, we talk about everything but football. I mean, there's a lot of life stuff in there. And you see a side of Scott Pioli, I don't think anyone knows. And then this last week, Ross, we had a mental health panel. Uh, Among the guests were your friend and mine, uh, former Eagle superstar Brian Westbrook, who's a good friend of Villanova. He talked about the challenges of mental health in sports and, and advising younger athletes as he does now. And we had some really good discussion, especially about college athletes. So high school college athletes, People out there are in that in that mode, or they have children in that mode. I think it's important to listen. So the past two business of sports, I encourage the listens, really uh, deep dives into those areas. Andrew, there's a lot to get to today, man. Um, yeah. It's uh, it, it really is your time still, and it's on uh, my birthday, guess, Ross. Birthday. What's that? And it's my birthday. Oh, that's right. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. Happy birthday. Uh, 62. I mean, never. You told me your age a couple years ago. Never in my life would I have guessed that. Had an awesome tweet about 30 minutes ago. People need to check it out at Andrew Brandt. But I'm going to brag about my boy real quick. (laughs) Joined the Packers at 40. First triathlon at 47. By the way, you look crazy young in those Packers pictures in your 40s you do not look like you're in your 40s then (laughs) when you're talking to Ted Thompson first triathlon at 47 is crazy joining the media at 51 law professor 56 started podcast newsletter at 58 what do you mean you climbed Everest equivalent at 61 that's that thing I did last year it's hard to put into a tweet remember I had to go out to Utah and go up and down the mountain 13 times to equivalent. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. To equivalent 29,200 feet. So that, that was that. That's awesome. All right. 
So let's get to some of your expertise, starting with two reports. Look, this could come out any point, but right now we still don't have the ruling on Deshaun Watson from Susan Robinson, the judge presiding over the situation. But there have been a couple of reports that have come out, Andrew. One suggesting that if Deshaun Watson ends up being suspended for the year, that he will sue. He and the NFLPA will sue the NFL. And then more recently, a report that the suspension is expected to come in between two to eight games. So always curious, Andrew, your thoughts when stuff like this starts coming out. You know, are these – is this actual information that's being leaked out or is it people trying to send a message to Susan Robinson or someone else? Yeah, I don't know if it's – I don't know if it's either. I mean, I think we have established, and you've said on your show, I've said on mine show, we have this brand-new process. It's not brand-new, but it's the first time where it's not Roger Goodell as judge, jury, and executioner. It's Roger Goodell simply as appellate judge – and the judge is a former real judge, Judge Sue Robinson of Delaware. I don't think we can speculate unless someone's into her. You know, like someone is really talking to her. And I doubt that she's leaking anything, seriously doubt. So what we're hearing is spin from either side. I mean, the only spin I think from the league side is that they want a year of suspension or more. The spin from the other side is like, hey, you know, maybe it didn't go so well for the league, or maybe it'll be two to eight games, or maybe it won't even be a suspension at all, or they'll go to court. And good luck with that, because the Tom Brady precedent really strengthened the league in terms of uh, deference to the league process over coming to court. So that's not going to work, in my opinion. So I just don't tend to believe I kind of, you know, my attitude is kind of roll my eyes when I see it's expected this or reports that. Now, again, if people are right that Watson has a light suspension, good for them. But I just don't see how we can play into what Judge Robinson is going to do, although we think it'll happen in the next week or so. I feel like if we're talking to Sean Watson, we got to talk about what the Texans did, yeah. Andrew which is settling 30 lawsuits. Deshaun Watson settled 20 of the 24 against him. There's still four outstanding. The Texans settled 30. What I am a little confused on, Andrew, is how 30 people were suing the Texans, but only 24 Deshaun Watson. Well, how do you explain the different, like the six people difference? Well, this comes from Tony Busby, who is the woman, who's the lawyer for all the women suing Watson. And there were more women suing the Texans than Watson, it appears, because perhaps they felt themselves put in a position uh, by the Texans of control, perhaps, by Deshaun Watson, even though they didn't feel wronged enough to sue him directly. I think it's a great question that I don't know the full answer to, but here's my answer. This has got to concern the NFL big time, in my opinion, because what you have is you have one of the club's owners, one of the clubs slash owner of the NFL settling lawsuits based on wrongdoing by one of its players. Think about that. It would be like the Cowboys settling a lawsuit to Ezekiel Elliott. It would be like, uh, the Steelers settling lawsuits against Ben Roethlisberger. This doesn't happen to my mind. So listen, I was kind of, I was very glib about this on Friday night in, in, because Ross, what, what are they selling for? They basically said, well, you know, we want to do right by women. Well, why are you paying these women? That's a simple question that the commissioner should ask Cal McNair. Why are you paying these women? It can't just be a statement about domestic or about women. I mean, I, you can you can give to organizations for that. Why are you paying these individual women? Because this does not look good. And now we have you just talked about what are we going to do with Watson? We have 30 lawsuits settled by the team, 20 by the player. And you're telling me there could be a light suspension? Just none of this would look very good. 
none of this would look good for the league. And it hasn't to this point. You know, Andrew, maybe, maybe they just wanted to put it behind them and just didn't want it. You know, that that's what that's the deal, right? They just want even if they don't think they did anything wrong, they just wanted to put it the whole situation but, behind but them and get it over with. I'll challenge you on that. So what is the it they're putting behind them? <laughs> the lawsuits outstanding against them. Right. <laughs> but you don't just pay because it, I don't know. Like, what is the it they're paying for? Just well, I think, I think on some level they're they are acknowledging wrongdoing, right? Yes. They're acknowledging that they did aid in a bet yes. in some way. That's my point. And Jenny Ventress in the New York Times was on my podcast, and I know she was a little hesitant, but I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> they arranged for rooms at the Houston Hotel and other things. And then, of course, as people have talked about. The NDA provided by the security employee of the Texans. Wow. I mean, NDA to, to do what? <laughs> like, in other words, we don't need to question to do what. We need to question why is this being provided by the team? What did they know that he needed it for? Those are the questions. Meanwhile, Andrew, your buddy, Mr. Snyder. Oh, is on a yacht mm. going all around Europe, avoiding a subpoena. I mean, that's what's happening, right? Is there any other plausible explanation? <laughs> I don't know international law that he can stay in international waters and avoid a congressional subpoena. Uh, there was some communication, as we read, Ross, between his lawyer and trying to get a date, which is still upcoming, uh, July 28th or 9th, which would be like the last day of the session. I don't know where that went, but um, yeah, it's what I said at the beginning of this whole process. He would rather incur the wrath of people like me and you for not showing up than incur the wrath of Congress for showing up. Clearly, he has something to hide. And But as I've said all along, good luck to those fans wanting him out. It's just, they're not going to do that. I mean, he's been protected all along through these years and years of the same kind of behavior of his team. He's not going anywhere and uh, Congress can't seem to catch him. Two thoughts on that. One is what, what could happen negatively if he, if he spoke to Congress, like what could they do? Do you know? I mean, the reason they've had these hearings is to impose some sort of control over these workplace environments, control over NDAs, non-disclosure agreements signed by employees that leave the team. Um, theoretically, they could impose that throughout law, and it would obviously directly affect the NFL, but a, a much larger scope than that. I think it would be the court of public opinion, Ross. I mean, I think he would be called upon to be on video for the world to see. And I think it would be video. I don't think he'd show up. Um, you know, having, having to answer some tough questions about what happened. And he would say, I know, he would say, hey, it's years ago, it's years ago, it's years ago, we cleaned it up. But I don't think they would leave it at that. I got a few more questions for you. Last Friday, there was no franchise tag deals getting done at the deadline. Whether it was Jesse Bates, Dalton Schultz, Orlando Brown, Mike Gesicki. Any any thoughts on why not, Andrew? Yeah, any deadlines. <laughs> My deadline spur action didn't work, huh? I mean, I think uh, the Orlando Brown, I heard about it. And again, we talk about spin. There was all the spin that it was a great contract offer and it had this much money. But these guys tend to be more sophisticated negotiators when you get to this level. And I'm sure he wanted guarantees that would protect the security of the contract more so than the overall value of the contract. And, you know, with the tight ends, it's interesting because the market was kind of set by um, Kelsey and Kittle and earlier Gronkowski. And, it just seems like that was still kind of a quote unquote weaker market. There hadn't been the jump in the tight end market like we've seen with wide receiver. 
So just my sense, those guys are waiting for that market to jump up again. They wanted to make a jump and the teams were holding fast to that level. So I guess the differences for each um, with Ken, with Cincinnati and Bates, you know, they're always a tough team to deal with the Bengals. So we'll see where it goes. But uh, having gone through those analysis of those four, I guess I'm not that surprised. What about the Ravens and Lamar Jackson, Andrew? Because it's so interesting for all this time, the Ravens have wanted to pay him. They wanted to pay him. They wanted to give him a new contract. And he said, no interest, no interest. Now, all of a sudden, he's interested. He wants the new deal now. I don't know who talked to him, what they got into him, but he's kind of made it clear now he wants the money, Andrew. It's it's interesting to see uh, really a total 180. I guess that he had a certain timeline in his head. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I wrote about this for Sports Illustrated. I've been talking about it. To me, it's become very simple with the Watson deal. Everyone talks about he doesn't have an agent. He doesn't have this. They don't negotiate. Well, it's simple. And ironically, the Watson contract makes the need for an agent even less because it is the standard. Now, teams hate it. I get it. And teams will argue it's an outlier. And teams will argue that Haslam was stupid for doing it. But it's there. Five years fully guaranteed, $46 million average. Done. That's the market. And I know people say, well, what, you know, uh, Lamar is going to get hurt and injuries and all. Like, okay, well, I'm a negotiator. That's the market. And if the Ravens have offered that market, then the lack of contract is on Jackson. It's on Jackson. If the Ravens have not offered that level of contract, that's on them. That's on them because they, you know, they're going to try to explain away Watson. And if I'm Jackson or his agent, I know he doesn't have one. You got to say, so what? <laughs> you know, I don't want to hear about the extenuating circumstances with Watson. It is the market. So maybe they're trying to get one of those Josh Allen, Pat Mahomes, 10, 12 year deals, which are eight, eight of the nine year, eight or nine years of it is unguaranteed. But this is something that I think, uh, is more than meets the eye. I don't know if the Ravens have negotiated at the level that the top of the market is. Last one I have for you, Andrew, is just naming rights, because that was in the news with Heinz Field no, being no longer. Now it's Acrisure Stadium. I, I just, look, I know this wasn't something that you did as the vice president of player finance for the Packers, but I guess just your thoughts on naming rights and the value of them, because I, I am a big believer that the value is like as the stadium's being built, and once the stadium opens, and just kind of having everybody say it's Heinz Field, it's Heinz Field, it's Heinz Field. I don't see a ton of value being the second one or third one in. Yeah, it's one of those time will tell as people are going to refer to it in their mind as Heinz Field for a while, but eventually that'll take on right. Eventually. It'll take on that name of Acrisure. And I just, you know, I'm kind of thinking, Ross, in the general scheme of networks paying billions of dollars and, and sponsors paying hundreds of millions to be associated with the NFL, $10 million a year for Acrisure, I think that's a pretty good deal. You know, I think you get on national TV 18 times, 17 times. Uh, I'm sorry, eight times, eight or nine times. And, you know, people are going to refer to it. It's going to be in the byline over how many years. So you get, it's 10 million a year. That's the rate because the LA SoFi Stadium got 20. Those are two teams, Chargers and Rams. So I guess we're going to have to just sort of get used to Acrisure. Maybe it'll be by mid-season. We don't refer to it as Heinz Field anymore, but uh, that's the rate. Now we have, just like we was talking about Watson on contracts, this is the rate. For $10 million a year, you want to get a naming rights deal with an NFL stadium. Check him out on social media. That is the key. At Andrew Brandt, we talked about earlier all the great stuff he's got going. Business and sports podcast. There's nothing else out there like it. Fantastic stuff each and every week. Andrew, thanks so much as always. Thanks, Russ. And thank you, Babel. Listen, for most of us, learning a second language in high school or college 
wasn't exactly a high point in our academic careers. I even had to take three semesters in college. It's hard. I took three semesters of Spanish, and I still don't really know it that well. But Babbel teaches bite-sized language lessons that you'll actually use in the real world. This is what's so cool. They have 15-minute lessons that make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. You know, other language learning apps use AI. Babbel lessons were created by over 100 language experts. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel. You can access podcasts, games, videos, stories. Perfect, I think, for children now, too. And it has a 20-day money-back guarantee. Start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. You go in anywhere the rest of the summer. You go in international right now. When you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to Babbel.com and use promo code ROSS. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com, code ROSS. Tux Takes. Let me actually do that, Babbel. I want to learn Italian now that I just spent a lot of time there. All right, let's start today with Deshaun Watson, as you and Andrew already discussed. He's going to sue if uh, the NFL gives him that year suspension, or he wants to sue, I should say. So I always think that that's interesting because to me that feels like a preemptive strike across the bow where someone wants either Susan Robinson or the NFL to know, hey, Susan, you make it a year, your ruling's not really going to stick because we're going to take it to court. Or, hey, NFL, if she makes it eight games, and, and you appeal, send it to a year, we're going to sue you. So to me, as much as anything, Bri, it kind of feels like a threat. And I thought Andrew made a really good point. Unless you're talking with Susan Robinson, how do you think it's going to be two to eight games? I saw Mike Florio from Pro Football Talk said that's the current thinking. But it's been pretty clear that Mike Florio is talking to I, the NFLPA or Deshaun Watson's legal representation, just based on his reports and, you know, per sources of the NFL didn't do this, the NFL didn't do that. So we'll see. Everybody's got their own sources. Everybody's got their own motivation for some of this information. Tux takes. If you're a rookie on the Bills or the Raiders, well, your summer is officially over. Rookies reported yesterday for those two teams, a bunch more teams today. Right, so that means the Bills and the Raiders are practicing today, the rookies, which that, like, that gives me the, is this a word, Bri, heebie-jeebies? Is that a word? Yeah, I, I don't know if it's two words, though. I don't know if Hebe is one and GB is a second one, or maybe... But, it's like, two. it's one of those where I know what it means, but I have no idea how to spell it. Hebe GB's origin. The term is widely attributed to William Morgie Billy DeBeck. What are Hebe GB's? Jitters, creeps. More Very importantly, is it is it one word or two? Hebe and GB don't mean anything as independent words. And Hebe Jeebies was coined at a time and place when there was a spate of new nonsense rhyming pairs called rhyming reduplications. The bee's knees, that is. Anyway. Heebie-jeebies comes with the bee's knees. It's a feeling of anxiety, apprehension, illness. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. That's what I'm feeling. Yeah, that, that would be accurate. I, I've got the heebie-jeebies. You got the jitters? But, yeah, like the, the idea of reporting to training camp, July 19th. So we're recording this a little different time for us, but it's 1226 p.m., on Tuesday, July 19th. And right now it is 88 degrees 
it's going to go up to low 90s today. I mean, it's hot. Being in full pads, running into other human beings at 320 pounds, yeah, heebie-jeebies. Heebie-jeebies for sure, Bri. Tux takes. Rodney Hudson from the Arizona Cardinals says he's coming back. So I need more information on this. Was he thinking about retiring and didn't want to play anymore? Did he want more money? If he wanted more money, did he get it? Because right now, let's talk about the Arizona Cardinals interior offensive line. Left guard Justin Pugh thought he was going to retire, lost weight until reportedly Steve Kime, the Cardinals GM, asked him to come back. Hmm, okay. So he had to put weight back on. This guy was retired in his mind. Retired, done, losing weight. Rodney Hudson skips mandatory minicamp. I don't know if he was thinking about whether or not to keep playing or what. Doesn't seem real good. Now, maybe he just wanted more money and he got it. And that's fine. But if he was thinking about retiring, then you've got the right guards, Will Hernandez. The guy couldn't start or hold down a starting job with the Giants offensive line. I mean, Brian, that's a, that's a bad trio right there. That's a, that is a not – I am not getting Super Bowl vibes, to say the least, from the Arizona Cardinals interior trio. Let's be real. Tux takes. And finally, uh, excuse me, Ravens running back, J.K. Dobbins, disputes a report that he might not be ready for week one of the NFL season. Curious, by the way, Bri, people would only know this if they watch on YouTube, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. You wear a hat a lot on the show when you produce the show, a lot. You don't yeah. like to do your hair. You're concerned about your hair. You're kind of a pretty boy, I guess. I don't know. But usually the hat is forward. <laughs> today it's backward. Is there logic or reasoning to backward today? I guess I'm there just curious. absolutely no logic or reasoning. And usually the hat makes a, an appearance because we're doing this at 6 in the morning. And I literally roll out of bed, take the dog outside, put a hat on because otherwise I'll look like this. But why are you backwards? Like, were why you not? I don't or something? know. I don't know. No idea. Not, uh, you know, I'll put it on frontwards and I will show the U, the University of Miami, for those of you watching. There you go. I only wear my hat backwards if I'm doing push ups or I'm worried about sun on the back of my neck. Other words, otherwise, my hat is almost always forward. Yeah, because there's I'm really, really no wearing a hat in the first place to kind of protect my eyes and face, you know. Okay, get to the last take. It's forward now. Are you you happy? No, I was just planets, curious. planets curious. Line it, now. You, you feel it just it just stood out to me that you had it on backwards. I'm sorry. That's all right. Tux takes. Did you already say it, J.K. Dobbins? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I totally zoned out because I was fixated on the hat. All okay. right. Oh, I'm sideways happy. now. Brian, you're going to get us like 5,000 more YouTube subscribers just oh, with yeah. this whole hat thing. YouTube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. So Ian Rappaport came out and said, Ravens are not going to rush J.K. Dobbins back. He's not a sure thing for week one. Fantasy football freaks out. Gets back to J.K. Dobbins. He doesn't like it because he is an athlete. He's determined. He's working his tail off to get back by week one. And he, in his mind, there's no doubt he'll be back by week one. So therein lies what's going on here. That happens. Uh, you know what else happens? Every once in a while, I forget our unbelievable, I think we're done here, members of patreon.com slash RT Media, like I did yesterday. So now I got to give them twice the love. Pizza Boy, Pizza Boy, Brewing. Sportaculture, Sportaculture. HumanHeadNYC.com, Human Head Vinyl Records. SteakhouseSports.com, SteakhouseSports.com. Go-Bengals.com, Go-Bengals.com. Evergreen Economics, Evergreen Economics. Ooh, I even went different pronunciations of the E-C-O-N. 
in economics or economics. I think either is acceptable. I think Greg Cosell will be back on Thursday with an unbelievable breakdown of Lamar Jackson. I think Steve Fezzik talking about betting syndicates and a big bet on tonight's MLB All-Star game was interesting. And I think we'll have the fantasy feast with Joe Dolan starting Tears of Dolan tomorrow. And I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feasts, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found.